The Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration Center for Substance Abuse Treatment has funded the Pennsylvania Department of Health at $9.8 million for five years to provide expert services in general medical and other community settings. These grantees will provide services to adolescents and adult patients with substance use, misuse, or dependence disorders. What is ESPERT? ESPERT is a comprehensive, integrated public health approach to the delivery of early intervention and treatment services for people with substance use disorders and those at risk of developing them. Primary care, trauma centers, emergency departments, and other settings provide opportunities before more serious consequences can occur. There are three goals that ESPERT has set out to accomplish. First off, to encourage healthcare providers to screen and provide advice or counseling to their patients who misuse alcohol or other drugs. The second is to influence risky behavior patterns and reduce exposure to the negative consequences of misuse. And finally, to improve the linkages between the general community health care and specialized abuse providers to facilitate access to care when needed. Three Pennsylvania counties have been targeted to implement ESPERT. They include Allegheny, Bucks, and Philadelphia. ESPERT within each of these Pennsylvania counties has been uniquely implemented in Planned Parenthood clinics, emergency rooms, trauma centers, prenatal clinics, residency programs, and private physician offices. As of July 3, 2008, over 73,000 patients have received ESPERT services through the project. Of those individuals, slightly over 12% screened positive and received an intervention and or additional services for substance misuse, abuse, or dependence. Statistics have shown the most common contributory factor to injury occurrence is alcohol abuse. Alcohol is responsible for approximately half of all trauma deaths and non-fatal injuries in the United States. Statistics indicate that 15 to 25 percent of injured patients in the emergency room are BAC positive. About half of the time, illicit drugs are also used with alcohol. The misuse and abuse of alcohol can lead to certain risks. It can contribute to and complicate health problems such as certain types of cancer, stomach problems, reduced immunity, liver disease, and diabetes. It can also contribute to aggression and depression. It can exacerbate social problems leading to trouble with one's spouse, family members, employers, and or financial stability. Even though, on average, the problems of individual risky or problem drinkers are less severe than the problems of harmful or dependent drinkers, the number of risky and problem drinkers is vastly larger and creates enormous social, legal, medical, and economic problems. Of all the alcohol-related problems seen in the emergency rooms and trauma centers, the majority of these problems are experienced by risky and problem drinkers, not addicted patients. Results on research for screening and brief intervention have been positive. Additional outcomes, as shown here, can be found at www.insightforhealth.com. This report indicates the outcomes for patients that participated in the Texas Insight for Health project. ESPERT is also demonstrating benefits. Cost analysis studies have shown that in a trauma center analysis, every dollar spent on screening and brief intervention saved $3.81 in direct injury-related costs. In a community clinic analysis, of the 800 heavy drinking patients that received an intervention had significantly fewer accidents, hospital visits, and adverse events related to drinking. It generated nearly $56,300 in savings for every $10,000 invested. And in medical costs alone, the benefit to cost ratio of brief intervention was 3.2 to 1 over a 12-month period. There are multiple barriers to screening and brief intervention in the medical community. 
Some of those include uh, not having enough time to carry out interventions or not being reimbursed for screening or relief intervention. Others include just discomfort about initiating the discussion of substance use or misuse or physician lack of training or education about the nature of substance use, misuse, or dependence. Unfortunately, many physicians are uncertain about referral resources within their community. Traditional substance abuse treatment programs focus on patients with alcohol or other drug abuse or dependent diagnosis. As noted on the slide, there are differences between abuse and dependence, which include withdrawal and tolerance. It is important to note that in order for the diagnosis to be made, patients must experience these symptoms for at least one year. The primary focus of specialized treatment has been persons with more severe substance use or those that have met criteria for substance use disorders. The ESPERT initiative targets those with non-dependent substance use and provides effective strategies for intervention prior to the need for more extensive or specialized treatment. The target population for those for screening and brief intervention are those patients that are considered high-risk drinkers or those probably abusing or dependent on a substance. Some additional benefits of ESPERT implementation include it does not require a drug and alcohol specialist to implement. In addition, it views alcohol or drug use along a continuum, not just seeing the patient as being simply addicted or not addicted. It also provides an active, systematic way to screen and provide brief intervention or referral for more specialized services. ESPER provides an approach and language to address drug and alcohol issues and reduce resistance among patients by using a non-confrontational approach that puts the responsibility for change on the patient. When screening, it is beneficial to use a consistent tool that has been found to be reliable and valid. There are multiple options or tools that are, can be administered by self-report or interview, paper and pencil, or computerized. Screening instruments vary in their ability to detect different patterns and levels of drinking and in the degree of which they apply to specific populations and settings. Some examples include the BAC or blood alcohol content or other medical tests such as liver function, the audit, or the alcohol use disorders identification test, which incorporates questions about quantity and frequency of alcohol use. The ASSIST, or Alcohol Smoking and Substance Involvement Screening Test, which was developed by the World Health Organization and covers tobacco, alcohol, cannabis, cocaine, amphetamine-type stimulants, sedatives, hallucinogens, inhalants, opioids, and other drugs. The DAST, which consists of 28 questions or is modified to 10 questions, is self-administered or interviewed tool is to detect drug problems and also assists with the staging of the patient's level of possible dependence. The CRAFT is intended specifically for adolescents. It draws upon adult screening instrument and covers alcohol or other drugs and situations that are suited to adolescents. The questions are, have you ever ridden in a car by someone, including yourself, who was high or had been using alcohol or drugs? Do you ever use alcohol or drugs to relax, feel better about yourself, or fit in? Do you ever use alcohol or drugs while you're by yourself or alone? Do you ever forget things you did while you were using alcohol or drugs? Do your family or friends ever tell you that you should cut down on your drinking or drug use? Have you ever gotten into trouble while you were using alcohol or drugs? Tools such as the T-ACE and Tweak are used for pregnant women, as well as four or five P's, which is based on the work of Hope Ewing and Ira Chasnoff. The four or five P's are screening instruments that can be used to screen women of childbearing age or those that are pregnant. Much like the craft for adolescents, the four or five P's detects the risks women may be exposed to and thus at risk of use. 
The cage is not listed here. However, the questionnaire has been evaluated in several studies showing sensitivities ranging from 43 to 94 percent for detecting alcohol abuse and alcoholism. Cage is well suited to a busy primary care setting because it poses four straightforward yes-no questions that the clinician can easily remember and requires less than a minute to complete. However, the test may fail to detect low but risky levels of drinking. In addition, the CAGE often performs less well among women and minority populations. ESPERT uses the following guidelines developed by the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, or NIAAA, for the definition of a standard drink. These guidelines are also depicted on the screening tool. Because the screening requests the patient to report their level of alcohol use, it is important that each respondent has a clear understanding of what constitutes a standard drink. Some patients may mistakenly believe that a 16-ounce beer or a martini, for example, is a standard drink. This illustration provides a clear description of the equivalence of a standard drink. The following are the basic steps in the screening process. Step 1. Introduce the screen. Step 2. Be specific in your questions. Step 3. Make sure you are speaking the same language as the patient. Use reflective listening and probe to make sure that you are understanding what the patient is saying. Step 4. Convey a non-judgmental attitude throughout the screen no matter what the answers are. The purpose of screening an ESPERT is to assist individuals in recognizing preventable risks. These screenings are intended to be a simple and unobtrusive part of the office visit that may be included with other routines such as blood pressure checks, weight, vitals, etc. By incorporating the initial screening questions listed here to the other triage routines of the practice, the questions are normalized into the day-to-day -day operations of the provider. These six short questions can be self-administered via questionnaire or asked by the staff. The Pennsylvania Aspirin Initiative employs a two-stage approach to help identify at-risk individuals. The screening tool is double-sided. Side 1, shown here, consists of six questions. Three ask about a patient's alcohol use and the other three about drug use. A score can be obtained by adding the three small numbers before the response selected by the patient for questions 1 through 3. A score of 7 or more for women or those over the age of 65 and a score of 8 or more by men is considered positive. Patients may also screen positive by answering affirmly to either of the drug questions in 4 or 5. These questions ask the patient about non-medical drug use. A positive screen should be reported if a patient answers yes to either of these questions, and the primary care provider or health care specialist should consider the appropriate level of intervention regardless of alcohol use risk. Side 2 of the Health Behavioral Assessment, shown here, contains the Complete Audit or Alcohol Use Disorders Identification Test. This should be used when the patient scores positively on side 1. The audit, which consists of 10 questions, is scored by adding up the patient responses, which correspond with the values on top of the columns. The sum of the values for all 10 questions is the patient's total audit score, which is used to determine the level of intervention. This diagram provides an illustration of how to match between the level of risk and the type of intervention. However, clinical judgment should always be used and can override these recommended protocols. For women and those over the age of 65, consuming more than two drinks per occasion, or seven or more drinks per week, is considered risky drinking. For men, consuming more than four drinks per occasion, or 14 or more drinks per week is considered risky drinking. Any use is risky when your patient is pregnant, taking certain medications, has certain medical conditions, is in recovery from addiction, or cannot control their drinking. 
It is important to note that there is no safe level of alcohol consumption during pregnancy, so it is advisable that no patient should drink any level of alcohol during pregnancy. This exercise will give you the opportunity to experience which screening method will be most effective for you. For exercise one, you can grab a partner or just complete the screen yourself. Record your answers while completing the front and back side of the behavioral health assessment. Do you have enough information to respond? What questions would you ask to get more information? In exercise number two, you will need a partner. This time, complete the behavioral health assessment screen and audit as an interview. How is this experience different or similar? Were you able to get more information by engaging your partner in the conversation? Which method do you think works best for you? ESPERT is a unique approach. It is a true paradigm shift that expands the continuum of care to include not only those that are abusing or dependent on a substance, but to those who are misusing or considered to be at risk for substance use disorders and delivering early intervention to prevent the progression to dependence. Much like other medical conditions that have adopted a public health perspective, SBIRT within medical settings employs a simple universal screen to identify those at risk as well as those who are abusing or dependent and to intervene to avoid expensive hospitalizations for long-term treatment.